Hey there, it's Dave Hompers here, hpylorisymptoms.com, and in this video on H. pylori, I'm going to explain or share with you 11 different herbs or vitamins that have been shown to have H. pylori fighting qualities. The first of these herbs is something called mastic gum. You may have heard of mastic gum because it's the substance that a lot of people use in an attempt to eradicate H. pylori if they don't want to use antibiotics. Mastic gum works pretty well. Didn't work very well for me when I took it. It actually made me feel worse. And so I went out into the literature and found all the other 10 herbs and vitamins that I'm about to tell you about. However, mastic gum does work. I recommend you try it if you have H. pylori. The second substance that has anti-H. pylori effects is deglycerizinated licorice root, which we'll just call DGL because it's a bit of a tongue twister otherwise. DGL coats the lining of the stomach, it soothes the stomach lining, and it also has anti-H. pylori effects. The third substance that has anti-H. pylori effects is a substance called vitamin U. Now, vitamin U is not really a vitamin at all. It is a substance that's found in cabbage juice. And cabbage juice just squeezed from a cabbage is an old folk anti-ulcer remedy. And so it works, they believe, by helping to kill off H. pylori. The fourth substance that I'd like to tell you about that has anti-H. pylori activity or properties is zinc L-carnosine. Now this substance doesn't just have anti-H. pylori properties, it also helps to patch up and heal the stomach lining. Zinc is a very, very useful nutrient for healing the stomach lining even when H. pylori is gone. The fifth substance is vitamin C. Studies show that vitamin C has anti-H. pylori effects and anti-inflammatory and antioxidative stress effects in the stomach. So it helps to protect the stomach lining from the effects of H. pylori as well as killing the H. pylori itself. The sixth substance is a herb called berberine. Berberine has been used for centuries around the world, particularly in the Far East, as an antimicrobial herb. It kills parasites, bacteria, yeast and fungi, and it has a very, very strong impact on H. pylori. The seventh substance I'd like to tell you about is actually a mineral. It's called bismuth. And even the medical system, the pharmaceutical companies use bismuth in H. pylori treatment. So if the triple therapy, standard triple therapy treatments fail, doctors sometimes prescribe what's called quadruple therapy. And the quadruple therapy actually contains something called bismuth citrate, which is a natural substance to kill H. pylori. And you can get that in um, health food stores and what have you, as well as in pharmaceutical drugs. The eighth substance I'd like to tell you about is a substance called sulforaphane. Sulforaphane is the active ingredient in broccoli sprouts and certain other cruciferous vegetables. And sulforaphane has been studied for its anti-H. pylori activity, and it seems to do a pretty good job at bringing down the H. pylori population levels in the digestive system. The ninth substance I want to tell you about is something called monolaurin. And monolaurin is basically lauric acid. And lauric acid is a naturally occurring fatty acid molecule that is found in coconut and coconut oil. And that does a pretty neat job of bringing down H. pylori levels as well. The tenth substance I really want to tell you about is allicin. And allicin is really the active component um, or antimicrobial component found in garlic. Now you can eat whole garlic, but if you eat lots of garlic, of course your breath smells and you people cross the street from you and they don't really want to be spending any time with you or near you. And so getting garlic in capsule form, as long as it's high quality, can be very, very useful in fighting H. pylori. Finally, number 11 is a substance called Manuka honey. So it's not necessarily a substance, it's more of a food. However, because it comes in kind of a jar and it's a lot more expensive than standard honey, I call it more of a supplement than a food. And Manuka honey for some people can bring excellent results in reducing the H. pylori population. You have to be a little bit careful with Manuka honey because it's very sweet and sugary. It may contribute to the overgrowth of other organisms in the digestive system, such as Candida. So I don't typically recommend it for that many people, just purely because I don't want people developing a Candida overgrowth. 
just for the sake of getting rid of H. pylori when there are so many other substances that are beneficial. These vitamins, herbs and minerals can be used on their own against H. pylori. We know they work because we've used them with thousands of people around the world in a very specific uh, way, a very specific formula. Or they can be used either before or after standard medical triple therapy treatment for H. pylori and they can be very effective either way. If you'd like more information on exactly how to use these substances, please visit my website, hpylorisymptoms.com, where you can grab a copy of my book, The H. Pylori Diet. In that book, I teach you exactly what products contain these substances, how to use them, when to use them, in what quantities to use them, and for what length of time or duration to use them. So I hope this video has been helpful. I hope you have much more awareness now of some of the natural substances that are available to help to fight H. pylori. As I say, if you'd like more information, please visit my website. My name is Dave Pompez, and I look forward to catching you again very soon. Thanks for watching.